Okay, let's roll. Jacob Salari is an architecture firm based in Vienna that develops potentials and possibilities out of our far from perfect environments. With combining crafts and technical pragmatics, the firm intends to produce architecture that is raw and honest. And today we are joined by Jacob himself to converse about celebrating imperfection in design or about making something that is good enough. So excited for it and thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for the invitation, Karina. No, thank you. Will you tell us first about your firm? Um, well, yeah, as you mentioned, um, the office is called uh, Studio Jakob Silawi, uh, perhaps also for the lack of a better name. And um, um, I mean, I would say there, there may be two, two parts when speaking about how it all got started. Uh, I would say the first part started around uh, 2015, um, me being a single practitioner at the time um, and studying and living in Tokyo, Japan. And um, I had friends at the time who lived in Nicaragua. So uh, they asked me to help them with a hotel project. And that's pretty much the first project that I did um, as a practitioner and um, a lot of Skyping, um, also living in Nicaragua for a certain amount of time. And um, yeah, and this changed, I would say, or as I see it more, the studio becoming more a team and, and being more professional, I guess, in that sense, started around the beginning of 2020. So pretty recent. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and since then, I, I would consider it an office since the beginning of 2020. That's amazing. How would you describe your design philosophy? If, um, you can say what it is. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, philosophy is a big word. I mean, perhaps uh, approach maybe would be better. Um, I think, um, in terms of the approach, there is for sure a strong belief in the connectedness maybe of things and circumstances and certain phenomena. Um, maybe the, the simplest way to, to put it is, I guess, how things relate to each other. Um, and there's a way I would consider, um, or the way I think about it is uh, how things respond to each other. So this doesn't mean perhaps just humans, but also plants and animals and maybe what we as architects call materials um, there is a kind of language or maybe i would even say there's a kind of body language in, in terms of the physicality of how things respond to each other and um, it's not only us as humans that i consider who have agency but also all kinds of, of objects living beings phenomena and so forth uh, there's also agency in, in that and them and um, um, what I basically try to do with architecture is how to mediate the situation of uh, almost a non-hierarchical uh, situation and how to put things into relation, basically. And this also means, of course, that as we all know, with any kind of language, there are always misunderstandings and conflicts and perhaps uh, unresolved situations. And it's very much also about, about them and about accepting, uh, accepting um, these situations and, and, and finding a way how to, how to also incorporate that into, into a design, into a building, perhaps. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So although you kind of touched upon this, but what is good architecture to you? Good architecture, well, <clears throat> I, I think that um, good architecture to me is um, um, an, a building or a structure that is um, very clear about its existence as being perhaps part um, of a bigger ecological system. Um, and that also accepts perhaps contradiction or conflicts um, as part of its own existence. Um, I mean, I always think about, um, so maybe also a side note, my, on my uh, mother's side, um, uh, our family are, farmers and uh, there is um, a mountain hut that also belong, uh, belongs to the family. And this is a wooden building that's 500 years old. So um, a pretty, pretty old structure, but um, nevertheless, it also has solar panels on the roof. And there's of course new um, infrastructure and cables and so forth. 
And there is a very different uh, temporality, I guess, in, in the same building. And I think for me, this is where I would consider this example, an example of good architecture. Mm. That sounds really cool, actually. <laughs> an old building one with the modern technology also incorporated in it. Yeah. Mm. So how do you perceive insufficiencies or non-ideal situations as a basis for making architecture? Um, I mean, yeah, that's, I think that's one of the main questions that I also ask myself, or I think very much about this. Um, I mean, I think that uh, the first step perhaps is to realize that we live in times that are crisis led and uncertain. I think most of us, have come to terms with that um, that fact, um, especially maybe from a position of ecology and also being aware of our human contribution to this um, to this state. Um, maybe if you also think about the the history of architecture, it's also a history of increasing comfort, and it's um, increasing uh, perfecting perhaps systems that um, that uphold. Um, this kind of condition and enable this kind of condition with, of course, um, the known ecological effects uh, in terms of emissions and so forth. Um, so I, I don't know, to put it simply, I think we, we kind of all know that we're in, in a big mess and uh, maybe instead of um, trying to resolve this or maybe the first step to resolve this is accepting that this exists and um, maybe, um, switching the mode of operation from optimizing, growing, perfecting, and so forth to a, a maybe a more humble approach that also uh, accepts these imperfections or these conditions that are not ideal. And at least I, for my architecture and for the work we do in the studio, um, I use the term good enough architecture for that. Mm. Do you have a, an example for that? Um, do you mean a project we've recently done or? Yeah, that resembles like good enough architecture. Yeah, well, um, there is, I mean, there's perhaps an example, a recent project um, that um, was an exhibition project here in Vienna. Um, and it was very much about this aspect of weakness and how perhaps weakness can also be seen as a potential for making and creating architecture. And uh, there's perhaps, or there is, maybe also an, um, a controversial claim in this exhibition proposal, which was that maybe not the systems that are most um, structurally strong um, are the most robust or resilient, but perhaps those structures which are very weak and fragile are those that can um, withstand or perhaps are more sustainable and, um, and resilient over time. And uh, this exhibition was um, very much about let's say the, um, the realities of construction and the sort of um, um, uh, protocols that go into this very form formalized um, field of building practice, which, um, which is how um, a structure should be made according to certain regulations and so forth. Um, and um, the exhibition, tried to look at this from this different angle, uh, from the angle of weakness. And uh, uh, there were no screws used. It was very much about everyday building parts, uh, corrugated sheet metal um, and um, wooden um, studs were used. And it was about um, um, looking also about maybe accidents or, or, or things that could be considered failures. Uh, we had one situation in this uh, exhibition setup where a, a drywall um, aluminum profile got stuck between two doors and instead of maybe trying to resolve it uh, we decided to keep it that way um, um, so maybe this is an example of, um, of how a good enough architecture or um, an architecture that develops out of um, situations that are maybe seen as insufficient um, could develop. Mm, that's great. So uh, I'm just wondering how might the process uh, part be different from trying to make a quote unquote perfect architecture to 
imperfect architecture? Uh, I, well, I think it, it has a lot to do with expectations. So, I mean, what do we expect from things? What do we expect from buildings? And maybe it's not so much about um, trying to create something new in that sense, um, but it's more about combining um, things that already exist or practices that already exist, techniques that already exist. So it's it's about um, shuffling and <clears throat> and excuse me, mixing mixing things that are already in place in the world that are resources that are basically already available, and then trying to um, to grow, increase, and um, create something new from scratch. Mm. So lastly, if that's the theory, in what ways can architects help shape the public perception and appreciation towards such honest architecture or invisible? Um, well, that's a good question. I, I don't know if I have a, a, a great answer for that. <laughs> I think it's... Um, well, my feeling is that there is for sure a sort of movement within the discipline that these things are important and there is a sense of shifting agendas more towards uh, more towards this direction. Um, I think if it has, or I mean, the goal probably would be for it to have a more, let's say, uh, wide scale um, effect also without, with, uh, um, outside of the discipline of architecture. And in order for that to happen, I think um, it's of course necessary for us to communicate a lot more, to speak, educate and um, share, um, share these thoughts to people who are perhaps also not part of the profession of architecture. And I think this is not only an architectural uh, problem, of course, this is a, a problem that uh, that's very much about a lot of disciplines. So I think the exchange the sharing of knowledge and of methods and of tools is is perhaps we're pretty sure um, the only possible way for it to have a more wide scale uh, effect. That's awesome. Yeah, I really like what you said before that design is all about celebrating connections and uh, that architecture is about mediating these different connections. So as long as we remind ourselves that whenever we design something is to achieve just that. I think we will strip away from wanting to make everything look perfect all the time. So um, yeah, thank you so much for the insight and for reminding us to do that. Thank you, thank you for having me.